to The Fitch Files. Hello and welcome back to The Fitch Files. On today's episode, we'll be chatting with Alexis, who's sharing her experiences about astral projection and sleep paralysis. And wanted to give a little update on the podcast. I've been doing some learning, doing some editing, figuring out how to work the YouTube and the TikTok and the Instagram and the Facebook and getting all that going. It's been going really good, actually. And uh, we've got quite a few people lined up to interview some bigger names and some not so bigger names. But I want to get a wide spectrum of people on here to talk with. So I hope you guys enjoy what we're doing here and the improvements we're going to be making to the show as we learn and grow. So thank you for joining us for this next episode of The Fitch Files. Hello, 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 and welcome to episode two of The Fitch Files. Today, we are speaking with Alexis Clark from Bakersfield, California, home of the corn, and she is a tarot card reader of quite amazing skill and also a medical assistant. She's going to be talking about sleep paralysis, lucid dreaming, and you know what? I'm not going to spoil it for you. It's going to be a surprise. So we're going to jump into it right now. Alexis, thank you for coming on the show, first of all. You're Thank badass. you for having me. Now, I've known you for like, what, four years now at this point? Yeah, I four, think so. Four years. And I kind of, for the guests out there, for the viewers out there, the listeners, uh, we've done quite a bit of Ouija board, tarot card reading, spiritual crazy shit between us and Allison. We've had quite amazing experiences together. So uh, there's quite a bit about your backstory that I don't know about, things that you went through experiences that you mm-hmm. went through that I don't know about. So I want to ask you about these things today for all the listeners out there and people watching on YouTube. Are you ready? Are you excited? I'm so excited. Can you feel the energy? I can feel the energy. So as someone who has clearly been experiencing things for probably quite a while, like what age did you first notice or start experiencing like weird things or spiritual things or lucid dreaming or spirit, you know, sleep paralysis? All those things, like what point did that all start for you? Um, I want to say seventh grade. Seventh grade. Okay, okay. Now, that's a little bit later on than I usually hear. People are usually like, oh, I was like six years old. I was like seven. Seventh just, grade, though. Okay. Yeah. I think okay. that's kind of like where my memory base started. Like, I know it sounds weird, but. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I get, I get yeah. that, too. I get that. Yeah. So what was your first, what was your first, like, main memory or something that stood out to you that was like, okay, I might not be a normal person. I, I might be sensitive to energy or sensitive to seeing things or sensitive to feeling things. When, when did you, what was your first like major moment in life that kind of led you to that realization? Um, I mean, I've always been really sensitive towards people's like energies and stuff. Um, mm. I think, um, I guess going into sleep paralysis when I had started it, it was, uh, seventh grade and um so if you don't know what sleep paralysis is um it's a temporary inability to move or speak while falling asleep or when you wake up mm. um it usually lasts between one to two minutes usually depending on the what kind of i guess like sleep paralysis you're in um, and it feels like a lifetime too yeah it does <laughs> Um, the first time I had it, I remember, uh, well, cause when you have it, I'm pretty sure a lot of, a lot of people have experienced it. You, when you first get it, you want to try to wake yourself up. Um, mm-hmm. and that actually takes longer to get out of sleep paralysis. So it makes it I, worse in a way too. Right. So my first few times having it, um, I think anyone's first few times having it, you try to wake yourself up and it's, uh, mm-hmm. it's awful. Try to kick out of it. Yeah. Um, it, feel, it feels horrible sometimes. Yeah, like you feel like you're dying or dead. Mm-hmm. So. It would keep me up at night, <laughs> literally. Exactly, I because I would have it for nights in a row, so I would like be terrified to fall asleep. Because um, I get it exactly. falling asleep. Most people actually get it waking up. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I pretty much always got it falling asleep, and I usually would be afraid of falling asleep because, I, like you said, when you start to go through it, it just keeps happening because you get, you get anxiety about it. 
it makes falling asleep harder, you know, harder to, to do. So right. it makes it, just, it kind of just induces the the paralysis more and more and more. The more you worry about yeah. it and fight it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people only get it like a few times in their lifetime. And I actually, I didn't know what it was. So I actually, I never spoke about it. I think when I did try to speak about it, like my grandparents would just kind of like brush it off and be like, well, it's nothing because it terrified me. So I stopped talking about it and I would just, it would just happen to me. And mm. then um, I remember being with my mom one day and she was explaining it to her mom and her mom was doing the same thing to my mom about it, kind of brushing it off. And I was like, wait, so you've experienced it, but she only experienced it when she was little, little. So like when she was like seven or eight, but she never mm. forgot it. Yeah. It's hard to forget it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I felt that I was about like, I think I was like six or seven when I first started to go through it. And it wow. just continued on. Just, I didn't know what it was. Like you said, and like when you were young, you don't have no, you know, you have no idea what it is, what's happening. But uh, as I as continued to get to, as I got older and like more spiritual, there's a period in my life where I just had it all the time. And it was, it was terrifying. Like I, I was getting pulled off my bed. It felt like I was seeing like apparitions appear in, like in my kitchen, yep. in my house. I saw, I saw a hooded figure that would appear in this chair in, in my kitchen. I had a vision mm-hmm. of this while I'm laying down. I saw this like hooded figure in a chair in my kitchen appearing. And I'm, I'm, I think I may have asked to travel to my kitchen. I'm not sure. But I could oh, see, I could, I I could see this like figure. Yeah. And then it, it started to form. And then once it formed, it turned around. And when it turned around, the terror that I felt and like the, the horror, I immediately woke up. I was scared shitless. Uh, it mm-hmm. was so horrible feeling. Uh, when it showed me its face, I didn't, I don't know what the face was, <laughs> but it scared the shit out of me and I could not fall asleep. I was, I was afraid. I was hitting my friends up on Facebook, like, Hey man, <laughs> I can't fall asleep. I just had this like horrible vision. Right. And, yeah. It was like a weird period in my life where it was just like almost every day. I just, so I, it was horrible. When you had it, did you also, you were able to open your eyes? I, I think I opened my eyes like a couple of times throughout it, uh, mm-hmm. like throughout my experiences, but usually, uh, I could I couldn't tell you if I did or not. To be honest, uh, right? You usually did, or yeah, no. I would. Um, I was always able to open my eyes, um, except for this one time. Um, so basically, what sleep paralysis is, I don't know who. Um, there's books on it, and uh, a lot of people think, uh, like in quotes, would be like the work of demons, mm-hmm. um, or spiritual possession, mm-hmm. um, kind of like you know the movie Insidious. Mm-hmm. They used to portray like the images back in the day. They'd have a demon sitting on someone's chest and sitting yes. there, just looking down at them. And yeah, yeah like, so I understand why. Were, <laughs> those were known as chest sleepers. Ooh, chest sleepers. Mm-hmm. That's a new one. And a lot of people um, experience hallucinations, alien abductions, shadow people. Um, so when I first like started having it, I would have it all the time until I realized like if I just let it happen, I would be able to wake up faster. Right. That's what I learned later on as well um, when I stopped fighting it, which is a recent uh, thing I started to do because I, I – when you embrace the feeling instead of fighting it, it makes uh-huh. it a lot easier to get through it, and it's not nearly as terrifying. But it takes a long time to realize that you can actually not fight it. <laughs> See, the but the part. thing about that is, is when I started doing that, more, like, creepy stuff started happening. Oh, really? Yeah, so oh. – So this had been happening for a while. I had decided to let it happen, um, like kind of just like let it do its thing this one night. Or no, I was actually waking up. And so it had never really happened to me when I was waking up, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I was laying there. And so you can hear things around you when you go into sleep paralysis. I was Mm -hmm. able to hear everything that was going on. I was asleep on the – a side note to note is like people who do have sleep paralysis will try to move to try to get their partner to wake them up faster. Um, Mm -hmm. if they're in bed with them. So anyway, I was asleep on the couch and the way the house was set up was the couch was right by the front door. So I was laying there, felt myself go into uh, sleep paralysis. I was like, I'm going to let it happen. Well, Mm -hmm. then I felt my cat come and lay up on my chest. And I was like, that's so weird. Um, I don't know what my cat doesn't do this. And then I hear the front door open and I could feel the breeze. Um, this time I was not able to open my eyes. Um, so immediately I thought that was weird. Mm -hmm. So I feel the cat lay on me and I could feel like the fur and everything. And I feel the wind from the front door. Then um, I want to say like two minutes go by, three minutes go by and I wake up and I can still feel the pressure on my chest, but my cat's not there. So I immediately turn around to the person that's holding the door open to be like, Hey, like, did you see anything? Like, could you see me like move or try to like 
was I breathing weird? Well, the door mm. was never open. It had been closed. But I know, but I know that I felt that breeze. I felt the cat on me. Like I was awake because you are awake. Mm. Mentally, you're, you're awake. Your just body's asleep. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like a, doctors will say it's like a disconnection between the two. Um, so I remember that was the first time that I was like, okay, wait, this is actually some creepy stuff going on. So then your your experiences started to increase, like the weirdness started to increase after you started to 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 fight it or no or not fight it. I mean your your experiences in general. It's yeah. Over the same so thing. it got it got progressively worse after that. So uh, there had been a time. I don't know if I should go into the astral projecting yet or if I should continue with just the sleep paralysis. I mean, if it relates, I mean, well, it's all you can all mix it together if you want. <laughs> so the next time after that, which was the absolute craziest time, I had fallen asleep, felt myself, or no, this was another waking experience. Went to wake up, went to sleep paralysis. Like my brain had woke up too early for my body. Mm. So I, this time it was literally right after that experience with the front door opening. I was trying my hardest to get out of it now, like my absolute mm. hardest. Like I was like, no, like this isn't happening again. I'm getting out of this. Well, I was only able to move one foot at a time, like in mm -hmm. for only like a few seconds each. So finally I am able to like wake up, but I fall to the ground and, oh. and I feel super heavy and like you ever take one of those naps and you just feel like mm -hmm. absolute crap afterwards. Yeah. You didn't sleep for days, but you did. Yeah. Like, yeah. think about that times a million. So I finally get up, and I feel super tall. Like, it's it's really weird. I'm short, so, like, I feel super <laughs> tall. Can so, confirm. She I, is short. Yeah. So I went, <laughs> I went to my kitchen, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to turn the water on. I'm going to splash my face with cold water. So I do that. I turn around, and there was a mirror, like, at the end of the, the kitchen into, like, where the living room would go. And I look at myself. And I'm not frightened. I'm not scared or anything. But I see, like, what you would see on a, a static TV mm. as my, Im like, not image, but, like, yeah. So. Oh, my God. Like a doppelganger? Yeah, but it was just static. Ooh. It was super weird. So, and I still feel super tired and super heavy. So I go and I look at, I go to look at the couch to where I'm sleeping. So I was like, you know what? I just need to go back to sleep. But I see myself still asleep oh. on the couch. Oh, so you went outside yeah. your body. Yes. And so I'm I'm staring at myself like, what? So I I turn around to look at, like, everything else in the house and kind of just to get, like, a view of, like, I think I was, like, kind of, sh like, shook, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was like, whoa. So I went and I actually laid back into my body and immediately woke up, right? Oh, my God. So the creepy part about this is, is when I got up, the water was still running in the kitchen. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so you, you sensed the water while you were in bed and that it was running. You, you right, saw it. I, well, because I had got up to splash my face with the water, but I didn't turn it off. Oh, my God. <laughs> so the water, the water was still running cold. And no one else was in the house. I was alone in the house this whole time. So... <laughs> And it was 100% real. Like, you know when something's real and you know when something's a dream. So I actually went on YouTube and I went to look it up. And there was, like, millions of people with the exact same experience. Like, everything to where I'm, like, super, feeling super tall, heavy, um, coming out of sleep paralysis, looking in the mirror and, like, seeing, like, static instead of your actual. Oh yeah. It was, like, for hours I was searching this up. That's actually Amazing and, and terrifying the, at the same time. Yeah, so it was astral projecting is what it all came down to. I had, I had a, I had a similar, I had not a similar experience, but I had a weird, uh, out of body, unexplainable experience where I, I was a, I was apparently dreaming, and then suddenly I, I wake mm -hmm. up, go in my backyard, and at the time in my life when this happened, I was very into learning about aliens and creatures and different dimensions mm -hmm. and all these different things. I look up in the sky in my backyard and I see next to the telephone wire, there's this giant UFO just sitting there chilling. And I think this is all real. It feels completely real to me. So I pull my cell phone out because nobody ever gets a fucking picture of a UFO. So I pull my phone out 
I'm like, I'm going to get a picture of this thing because I think it's real. So I pull my phone out, aiming at the UFO. It's like 100 feet away from me. I could throw a rock at it. You know, that's how close it is. Right. Uh, suddenly, as soon as I do that, I could I could see the UFO shooting like energy, like a like a. I couldn't see the actual energy from. I could see like the the air around me like rippling, like being affected by distorted something or other. You know what I mean? Like like a like how the road looks on a hot day. You know, that kind of weird rippling effect. So it knocks me on my ass. I fall to the ground. The, my phone falls to the ground. Suddenly. I get this like insane horrific. You know, the thing that I got in uh, sleep process before is this like weird horrific, almost like rage filled feeling, and my eyes, my eyes started to like bulge in my face, like they were like about to pop out of my freaking head. Uh-huh. Uh, suddenly, I start to raise in the air, like I'm levitating, and I'm sitting there, the levitating. The UFO is still there watching me. I'm starting to go in the air, I'm feeling this crazy energy around me, and just feel completely not myself, like I'm about to burst into flames, basically. And suddenly it, it flies away, silently flies away, you know, no noise. I fall to the ground. I stand up and I, I suddenly I'm normal again. I don't feel the rage. I don't feel this like weird, like my eyes are going to pop out of my head kind of feeling. I think this is all real still. So I run into my house, go on my computer, go to a message board all about <laughs> aliens and UFOs and shit like that. Right. I, start typing, I start typing my experience out in the, in the message board. I'm like, oh my god, I just saw a UFO, and blah, blah blah. You know, it did all these things to me. You know, blasted me with this beam. You know, and I press enter, and then I wake up. <laughs> and to this day, I, I don't know what happened. It felt more real than than real for me. It felt it felt right. like for me, it's an actual like memory that I can just recall upon you know like an actual thing that happened to me because it felt that real. And yeah. every alien experience, every every like alien related. UFO or like sea process experience I've had, it's always had the same feeling for me. Like my soul yeah. is being removed from my body in a horrific way <laughs> and then put back in me and then I'm okay again, but it feels horrible. And it's a lot like, of people, because when I went and like, you know, when I was trying to understand sleep paralysis more, a lot of people, which I actually had an experience um, to like deep in was um, alien, like what they say, alien abductions. And a lot of people have had those exact same experiences as you mm-hmm. with it, which is crazy mm-hmm. because how can more than one person experience, you know, something like mm-hmm. that without knowing what the other one has experienced. And nobody wants to, you know, people don't want to talk about it. Like even I right, right now saying it, knowing people will hear me say this. Hi, mom. Uh, when I when I say these things, I know it sounds crazy for people who haven't like, felt right. these kind of weird stuff, which people some people haven't felt anything at all, which is crazy to me. But right. you know, some people might think I'm crazy about it. I, I, at this point in my life, I don't care. <laughs> right. I was just asking my boyfriend the other day, like, have you ever experienced sleep paralysis? And he was like, maybe once, but it was like he acted like it wasn't a big deal. And I was just like, dang, some <laughs> people really haven't experienced this. I know. It's, it's like I – I'm not going to name drop anybody, but I, I hit up an artist that worked for Tool, and I was like, hey, you want to come on my podcast and talk about supernatural things? And he's like, I don't believe in the supernatural. I'm like, but all your art <laughs> is supernatural related. What do you mean? I don't believe in it. I don't get it. Like a part really? of me died on the inside when I when I heard that. I was like, what do you mean? You don't – which is fine. You know, I don't want everyone – I know everyone's welcome to believe what they want to believe. And, of course. You know, but I just – for me and, and you and people who have experienced it from a young age – it's hard to fathom life without it, you know, like exactly these unexplainable things that, that we can do with our minds and witness and feel and, and hear. And then some people just live their whole lives, you know, you know, never, never feeling it, never seeing it, never hearing it. And to me, it's mind boggling. <laughs> it's Yeah. And it was crazy for years. I thought I had got rid of my sleep paralysis. Like I wouldn't get it. Um, I got it so hardcore, like younger, Mm -hmm. like up into like high school. And then um, I didn't get it for a long time. And I want to say within the past two years, I started getting it, but it was like, like way more terrifying than I could imagine. For a long time, uh, I would, uh, this was like when I would go to sleep. And then I would go into sleep paralysis, and I was like, okay, like, this is weird. I haven't experienced this in a long time. Like, let it happen. And I was able to open my eyes, and uh, I was sleeping in my bed, and I was looking at my door, and um, I was hearing, like, pots being banged, like, in the kitchen. So I was like, oh, wow. you know, and it's it's real. I know I'm awake. Like, I literally had just, like, it was 
I was just falling asleep, so, like, I'm still awake, but my body's just not being able to move. So I'm just staring at the door, but it's open, and, like, um, I can see shadows because there's, like, light coming from in there. Um, So I start – the sound starts getting closer, and I start seeing a shadow. So I was like, okay, I'm going to close my eyes now because now I'm actually terrified. And it's getting close. It comes in my room, and it's banging so loud that it's hurting my eardrums, like, ringing. And so I'm finally able to get out of it. Like, nothing's there. My eardrums are still ringing. And then um, I had fallen asleep on the couch. This is just a little bit after. Um, And I start – I see, I think, what they call him, like, the hat man. Yes. I don't know. Um, So I actually see – I went to sleep paralysis. I see him peek around, like, the hallway. And then um, I think it scared me so bad that I woke up. So I don't know why I was sleeping on the couch at this time, but Mm – I slept on the couch for three more nights, and each night I would go into sleep paralysis, and he would get closer closer to me. And mm. the last night, he whispered something in my ear, and I don't know what it was, but it must have been bad because I still can't remember it to this day, but it scared me mm. so freaking bad. And the craziest part is I didn't tell anybody about this, and my friend at the time ended up telling me that she kept seeing this figure with a hat, like, around the exact same time. Oh my God. And it and it was like it came and it whispered in her ear too. It whispered in her ear too. Yes. Did she recall what it what what it said? I don't think she could remember what it was either. I oh think that's God. like that was the craziest like part about it is like I don't know what it was or what he said, but it was like so terrifying that like I don't know I couldn't remember it. And then the last time that I did have it, which was a while ago, um, mm. was you know like the clown horns like that sound. Like the, uh-huh. Yeah, so, <laughs> but but not like, quite like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good job. Um, I try. Same thing. I heard it from the kitchen, coming close to my room, closed my door, or not closed my door, but came in my door. And this time, I wasn't able to wake up, but I hear it leave. But then this is gonna sound so weird, but I hear like dogs like dying. Wow. Like, like whimpering. I, yes, and Ooh. so like. You know, like, when you wake up and you can still hear, like, the end of something? hmm Like, literally woke up and, like, heard the end of, like, You could still like, hear the cries of the dogs? Yes. Oh my God. And so, yeah. And then I, was, I don't think I was able to sleep for a long time after that. But, um... I, I, I want to know what the hat man is and why so many people see him. <laughs> like, what... I know. He obviously is, is a... He's something. I had no idea who that was. Everyone sees the, him. And then... When my friend had told me that she saw the same figure, that's when I was like, wait, if we're seeing the same thing, like, what is this? And then we had realized that it was an, it was an actual thing. <laughs> that, yeah, that's, that's always fun when you go online, saw this thing, and blah, blah, like, oh, I saw that, too. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> like, you like you guys saw it, too? What, like, what is it in our minds that is able to tap into whatever this creature is? Like, it's obviously so, a sentient of some kind. So the more I dove deep down into like sleep paralysis and stuff like that is um people explain it as like um your soul basically so it's like you know how like it's like like, doctors will say like your mind is awake but your body's Mm -hmm. asleep well like Mm -hmm. spiritually people will say that your spirit is awake like more aware Mm -hmm. when your body's asleep right because you're you're more in the astral realm yeah right and that's why people say that they'll fill these what are known to be demon sleepers on your chest. And so when you go to astral project or you leave your body, mm. like they want your body. It's free real estate. Exactly. <laughs> no, exactly. So yeah. that's what, that's what they say that is. And um, it's like a hermit crab seeing a, a shell that's out there in the open, like, well, I'm going to slide it in there real quick. can experience like when they come, like when they do astral projecting, they can see like dead people or like people that have passed on. Because you go into that, I, don't, I forgot what it's called, but that, like, mid-world. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, so, or, like, you yeah. know, like, in, like you know how he, he leaves his body, and, like, his dad had to go into, like, sleep paralysis, astral mm-hmm. projecting to find him, to bring him back to his body. God. <laughs> like, people have literally experienced it. Like, that's. Yeah, it's a I thing. It's, it's a real really, thing. It's really a thing. And like I said, people are afraid to talk about it. And so this is the whole goal of this kind of show is to talk about these kind of things and, and 
hopefully help people realize that if you, if you went through this kind of stuff, you're not alone. <laughs> you're not no. crazy. It's there's, there's things that happen to a lot of people and we don't, we don't know why. And no matter how deep you dig, you know, it's going to get more and more questions at the, at the end of the day. You know, it's just why, why do they affect us the way like, why, why is the hat man visiting people all around the world? Obviously he can, he's not in this dimension. So he's, he's, he's in the astral realm. So he can just like go from person to person. Mm-hmm. But what is it? Who made, who made him, <laughs> or, you know, who, who made it? Like what, <laughs> what what is the origin story of the hat man how did he become a thing is it because it's it, what did one person see it and then talked about it so much that it became a real entity you know like he, he believed it into existence but everyone started to see it but who what's knows about that is like i actually had never heard of this hat man when i had experienced right. him but neither had my friend right so that's like and same with astral projecting like i didn't know anything about it until i went and i looked it up and was just like, like why? Like, why does he have a hat? <laughs> why is the hat so significant? What What is the purpose of the yeah. hat? And then, not even <laughs> to mention, too, when all these experiences were happening to me, um, I was in the kitchen one day, and it was just me and my daughter, and I see the shadow run by, and I was like, I was like, whatever. And then, like a few moments later, I see my daughter who's sitting down in the living room, like look back, and was just like, oh, um, how long have you been there, or something like that? And I was like, well. I, I just came back from in there or whatever. And she was just like, oh, she goes, must have been the shadow people. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and she was like, oh, that little boy, like, he was in the kitchen, like, the whole time. Like, I thought it was you. He was like, but it must have been the little boy, like, the shadow person. And I was like, do you see shadow people? And she was like, all the time. And I was like, how are you not there terrified? You Runs in the family. I guess, but. So that brings me to my next question. Do do other people in your family also experience things like this, or are you more of like a black sheep? I'm. I, I can say I'm the black sheep. The only experiences my family. Well, no, my mom. My mom has a lot of right. experience with it. My dad, no, no one else in the family. Um, people right. in the family will say like every time that you like walk into a room or you leave a room, there's always like a shadow that follows you. My mom but, tells, used to tell me that same thing back in the day too. That was weird. Really? Yeah, I yeah. always get that. If I go into my room, I like. My whole family would be like, "Oh, like you know, there's a shadow that follows you." <laughs> I actually had my mom. Like, sorry, mom, if you're listening. Uh, back in the day, uh, I, I came home late at night, as I did, and uh, walked in my room. And her room was was like a there was a hallway. My room was on the right side. Her was on the left side, like cross the hallway. And uh, she could see me as I came into my room. I was like 16 or something like that. And uh, yeah, I walked in my room, and she's like, "She's like, who do you have with you? Like, you bringing a girl to your room?" <laughs> I was like, no. She's like, what are you talking about? She's like, I saw the person behind you. I'm like, what do you mean you saw the person behind me? It's like, yeah, there was a shadow behind you. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> then I had another person later on in life tell me, like, one second they saw a creature behind me, like, like an alien creature just sitting behind me in an SUV, just like sitting there in the back seat, just like watching me. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm glad everyone else can see it except me, apparently. But... Right? Yeah, I've had my job. <laughs> the same thing she's like who's with you i'm like what are you talking about she was like that person that's behind you i'm like i'm the only one here she's like i seriously just saw someone behind you i'm like mm, nope just me that's crazy but i so also you... feel like it's a lot Sorry, of man. more spiritually like awoken people like have also mm-hmm. probably been told that too though true not awoken but like spiritually i don't know Inclined. how to... yeah there we go <laughs> sensitive there yeah. we go sensitive to energies Mm-hmm. Well, you know your daughter's going to be the, the – she's going to have the same same things going on, sounds like. Right. <laughs> well, I know my, my oldest brother, Corbin, when he was little, we moved to this apartment, and we had knew nothing about the apartment. Um, this is a story from my mom. And uh, my mom, every time she would go upstairs, my brother Corbin would be up there, and he'd be looking out the window. And my mom was like, what are you looking at? He was like, the man that just – like." jumped out the window and um i was like what are you talking about he was like no this man just jumped out the window and so my mom just thought it was weird or whatever well come to find out that somebody had killed himself jumping out that window oh my god my brother had to have been what like six seven what yeah so that same room where my brother kept seeing someone jump out the window someone had actually jumped out the window to kill themselves no that that's a good that's a good segue for the story that I also can relate to. Um, mm-hmm. 
about that kind of thing is back in the day, once again, uh, my buddy had an apartment, uh, this brand new apartment, not furnished. We were checking it out. Uh, we're walking around and there's, there wasn't many rooms down to the main bedroom, the closet, the bathroom, and like a living room. Anyway, so I'm sitting there checking it out and I see a black cat, literally this like full on black cat. It was 100% there, walked <laughs> into this master bedroom. I let all my friends to the room. I was like, do you guys just see that cat that went in the room here? <laughs> should be no cats in this house, this apartment. <laughs> there should be no cats here. We go in there, there's no cat. I'm like, okay, that I definitely just saw a cat. It was 100% a cat. I, I don't mm-hmm. hallucinate things that usually aren't there, you know. So I'm like, uh, I don't know what happened. So we look at the closet of this room, and it's this very, very dark feeling, very dark energy, this felt bad all around and we tried to like walk into the closet we, it was actually physically almost impossible to walk into the closet because it felt so bad to go into it mm-hmm. so we, we tried to like i don't know why we're walking in this random closet for no reason but we just had the urge to and we're trying to stand in the closet it just felt horrible to go in it anyways it turns out that somebody died in a fire in that in that room in that closet and this weird little ghost cat led me into this freaking room <laughs> just go oh check out this closet gosh found out that the old past person died of, of a freaking fire in that in that exact place so it was so one of those things that you can't really explain or, or i've only seen a ghost cat like two times three times maybe I've seen a ghost cat but yeah it's just those kind of weird moments that you can't really explain to people like man i'm, I'm telling you i saw a cat go you know I'm telling you, I saw one. Like, yeah, yeah, sure you did, buddy. Like, no, I did. <laughs> I did, damn it. But they don't believe you, usually. But for me, when I hear about, you know, people going to places and they find out that something horrible happened in this, like, really, like, active place in the house, it's hard to deny that <laughs> that those kind of things leave energetic impacts, you know, on mm-hmm. the buildings. And whether it's intelligent or a loop, like a, a loop that keeps playing over and over again because of the energy attached to it. You never know. It's going to be, you know, it's, a, it's always a surprise. Like, once again, I, when people don't, you know, feel these things, I don't understand. <laughs> you don't right. feel these things too, other people? I know. <laughs> it's crazy. So my, so my next question for you is, have you, have you met beings while you're in the astral travel realm, while you're traveling um, or experience them at all? No, I think because I'm a very anxiety ridden person to begin with. Mm-hmm. But anytime I realize that I'm doing that, I immediately shut it down. Um, mm. The only like the only things really have been those experiences with like the that clown noise and the banging. We'll count the hat man. And the hat that man, counts. yes. That counts. So I mean. <laughs> like those I mean I read tarot all the time so like th- there's been a few times reading tarot when I've felt presence like come forward and um like this doesn't have to do with the astral realm but just like in general like spirits or like people that have passed come forward and I've been too scared or like you know I just feel like people are so skeptic that like mm-hmm. I'm gonna sound crazy if I'm like hey like your mm-hmm. grandma's saying what's up you know what I mean right so like I'll push those away just because I'm like eh, like, ma'am. So you're, like, you're denying your medium <laughs> your mediumship powers. What you're trying to tell me? Pretty much. <laughs> you're pushing away your medium powers because that's mediumship. That's what you're doing. Yeah, it's just something about it. Just like especially it it happens usually if I read for new people. Mm-hmm. Um, there's someone like that wants to speak to them so bad that I can like feel them, you know, come mm-hmm. forward. And then I'll just be like, you know what? Yeah, like, you're a medium. <laughs> that's what that's I'm what they the do. Spirits, that's what you're doing. I'll let the spirits pull these little cards for you. <laughs> yeah, no, that's you got to stop denying that power. <laughs> Don't deny it, girl. Yeah, it's just also I think other people who read tarot can agree too. Like, um, mm-hmm. it's tiring too when spirits do come forward. You feel like exhausted. Oh yeah. Like you want you could take a nap. Like I feel like every time I read tarot, I could take like a three hour nap too so for, i kind of save my energy for me like when i feel uh spirits or things that aren't my own energy uh-huh. i can be brought to tears i get pretty emotional right. usually like it's very emotional for me like if i see like a i went to a place where they had an un, uh, unmarked grave and uh me and allison were sitting there next to it 
And uh, the whole time we're there, I wasn't feeling anything. There was like Civil War, some inter- you know, Civil War uh, tombs and all kinds of crazy stuff there. But this unmarked, yeah, there was a unmarked grave. There's only like rocks, like making a rectangle. And I sat down next to it, and I just started. I just could not stop bawling. <laughs> like I just started bawling. Like I just couldn't. St- I'm getting chills right now thinking about it. Uh, I just. I could feel the I could feel the sadness and the pain of not having it. There was no name on it, and it was like really affecting me. Uh, mm-hmm. It really, it really, it really shook me to my core. <laughs> yeah. To say, but it really just. I get flashes of like I get like an image flash or something. You know, that's not my own. It's not my own thought. You know what I mean? Like flashes of things that aren't aren't from me. They don't relate to whatever's happening with me and you know <laughs> what I, what I'm doing that day. Just like weird things I don't know where. Just all of a sudden like. Being at like apartments and whatnot, you never know like what kind of energies are traveling through you and right. moving around you and portals around you. It's just so I've weird. also noticed too, like when I do read tarot and someone will be like, Oh, like what does, you know, this person that's passed on, like what do they want to know? And like it's no one that like I've spoken like read for like on this person before, like this past person. Mm-hmm. And um there's been a few times where I'm like oh, like, did they pass because of this? And they'll be like, oh, yeah. But the only reason I know that is because I can feel how they passed. Does that make sense? Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly how medium, that's a lot of mediums. They will, if you, I mean, I know you do, but if you watch ghost uh, ghost hunting shows when they bring mediums on there, they will, if someone like, you know, dies of a certain way, they'll be like, oh, my my heart hurts and my throat. Yes. I I can't, I can't breathe. I'm feeling this. Well, this one time it was, um, I got sleepy and like, I could see myself, like, sitting on the couch and, like, going to sleep. And I was like, okay, overdose, which it was, which had been a few. There's been a few times where I'm like, okay. Most of them are on the couch, surprisingly. Mm-hmm. But I was like, okay, overdose. And the – not this isn't – I can say from my experience with feeling people pass on through overdose, it's mm-hmm. peaceful. Like, there's mm-hmm. no pain in it. So it does bring people – peace to know like okay well my loved one passed very peacefully so that's one a few times where i've been like oh i'm tired like i could pass out right now and i've been like oh like overdose and they've been like that's crazy that one's that one was a weird one for me Mm -hmm. yeah that yeah that's that's the thing that i see a lot of with mediums is that they they feel they feel how the person Mm -hmm. passed for me i don't i don't usually feel they passed i just kind of feel their raw emotions or feel it like thoughts or feelings mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to explain right uh, so interesting to think about yeah because there's, there's so many so many layers of energies all around us at all at all times that are just constantly like a wi-fi signal this you know moving through us and sometimes we don't have any idea what like you know why we act the way we do or why we feel these things or like why did my mood just change for no reason why am i all pissed off for no you know for no reason because you're mm-hmm. sensitive to energy you're sensitive to these things around you right and a lot of people have no idea about that or that no notion of the possibilities of why they're feeling the way that you know they're feeling. So it's, I wish more people looked into these kind of things, and, and I think more people are actually sensitive to energy than they realize. You know, people just don't realize that they're sensitive to energies. <laughs> they just think it's exactly. just a random thing. Right. So have you ever had like a, a in, in regards to this is kind of off topic now, but in, in regards to dreams, which I'm really fascinated by, um, have you ever had a premonition dream before? What do you mean? Have you ever had a dream where you saw something or experienced something that happened later on in life? Oh. You, you went through it in a dream before it actually happened kind of thing. All the time. I can't – I don't know if I could, like, do a specific topic. But, yeah. like, someone, I'm like, oh, this has happened. Like, I know this has happened. Like, deja vu. But mm. I start realizing, oh, wait, no, I literally just had a dream about this. Yes. Yeah, I think it happens to me one, so, so much. One time, actually, no, this was actually, this one I do remember. So I was in Target with my friend and her mom, and she came out from behind this, like, rack. I don't know what she was doing. And then I was like, wait, I've had a dream about this. And I was like, your mom's about to come up. And her mom came up. And I was like, I said what she said, like, as she said it. And, she <laughs> and I was like, dude, I had, I just had a dream about this. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, mm-hmm. no, that actually has happened to me. Yeah, it's been a weird, it's been, like, a weird thing for me, like, throughout my life. It's like, I, I've. So you get it a lot. I'll, I'll go through a traumatic, uh, for example, I went through a breakup a long time ago in my dream mm-hmm. before I actually went through the breakup in real life. So when it actually happened in real life, I was already prepared and ready because I already felt the, the, gr- emo- like the, the emotions and, and grief and felt the pain and all that, all those things in my dream. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
or I would have a I'd have a dream and then you know, I'd go to like a concert with somebody or you know something like that and I'd be like wait a second I dre- I dreamt this like wait I know everything that's happening right now like I know <laughs> I even told my friend one time I was like wait, I'm like, wait a second I dreamt this dude I, dr- I actually dreamt this moment he's like okay I'm like no you don't understand I I dreamt this it actually happened he's like okay buddy you know? <laughs> Like yeah, I get it. It's hard. It's hard to understand, but I don't. I can't explain it. But like dreams for me have always been very abnormal. You probably like died in dreams before, right? You probably died once or twice. Oh yeah. Dreams. Now, what, what do you die in dream? Like what happens to you usually, if you can recall? Like when I like do. Like if you like that. died in dream, like what what do you see like immediately after, if you have died in a dream? Thinking about it now, usually like a light that sucks me back into waking up. Like, mm-hmm. I don't really see anything after, but it's usually, like, a like a, a light that sucks me back up. Mm-hmm. Does that for make me, sense? For me, it was, like, always, like, just pure blackness, and then I wake up immediately afterwards, which I have no idea. <laughs> like, completely opposite. That, yeah, I have no idea what that means, but... Uh... For me, for me in dreams, I've I can I could I could smell things sometimes. I could feel pain sometimes. I've actually taken ayahuasca, which is a which is DMT. And I hallucinated once I drank it in the dream. Uh, yeah, I feel pain, like full on pain, like real pain. I could smell, like I said, smell. Uh, I would just have dreams that have come true. I had dreams that involved like dinosaurs and creatures I've never seen before in real life, uh, mammoths and crazy things I've never actually seen with my physical eyes. I don't know how my brain did that, <laughs> but it did that. But for me, like it's right. always a lot of ocean uh, creatures. I'm always next to an ocean. There's always dolphins and whales and there's always animals around me in dreams. It's very weird. I can always recall some kind of animal involved, which might be some kind of symbolic, you know, gesture. I have no idea. I have so many questions. I'm like, why can I feel pain in a dream? And why can I do this and that? And what does it mean? What does it mean? Mm-hmm. I've read a lot of past life regression books, and um, sometimes those can actually connect to your past life and stuff that you've done. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Have so, you? Have you? Do you know of any of your past lives? Um. Yeah, uh, I feel like I know. Um, I know for sure. Like in my past life, I was a a nurse. Um, but I want to say it was like I was like it's in the like. Someone in my family who was a nurse, like, mm. I, like, that was one of my past lives. Like, I've always wanted to, like, know more about who mm. to, like, I know a lot of people who do know their past lives will go visit the graves of their past bodies. Ooh. And I've always wanted to at least, like, go further in depth so I can do that. That's crazy. Yeah, I've, I've had a couple recollections of, for me, I call them past life. I don't, they're, they're kind of like a mixture between dreams and just feelings and pretty trippy thing like i had a dream where i had a to me it was a dream but i think it was a past life uh experience where i was a middle-aged man from india and i looked in the mirror and i could see i looked like a middle-aged man from india but i was digging for crystals i look at i was a archaeologist or something like that something like that some crazy right digging digging along a riverbank or something like that digging up crystals and like artifacts and stuff and i looked in the mirror and i was like oh my god (laughs) that's me there i am but I used to have like a weird attraction to Texas, and I thought I was like a cowboy who got shot and killed on a horse. I had like visions of that. Uh, it's like you have, that I can't multiple, explain. you have multiple past lives that I've read, and it's crazy. Yeah. Like um, you go through past lives with people in your lives now, which is, I, I guess, another topic for another time. But it's really cool going in depth on that. It's like we're playing different characters each time, but we're still like it's like it's like we know each other like every time, but we're playing different characters, kind of thing. Like your right. soul family. Yeah, exactly. It freaks, like it freaks I know me out. It amazes your me. boyfriend, <laughs> your husband could have been your like mom it, and your pap. Yeah. It sounds weird, but it's yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Sorry for everyone out there listening. If that sounds weird to you, but this is this is how it is. Yeah, <laughs> There's a lot to it. Your your wife could have been your brother. Who you knows? You don't. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all connected, anyways. Yeah, we're all we're all from the same whatever. <laughs> we're all just fragments of the same thing, you know. We're all we're just, just different fragments of the same original, whatever you want to call it. I'm not, I'm not gonna right. call it a name, but different expressions of the same thing, you know. So just the idea of past lives and thinking about like how how that can affect like how that affects our current lives. That's what kind of trips me out. Like some people might have a certain phobia or fear that they can't explain, or they. Uh, my buddy Victor was talking about how some some people have like birthmarks 
that relate to their how they died in their past life. <laughs> like they might right. have like, like, a, like a mole, like where they got stabbed or shot. And yeah. then they, might have, they might have a fear of dying in that certain kind of way uh, without knowing why. Right. It's weird. It's weird to me, but I love it. I love the mystery of life. It's what keeps us going. It's what keeps us going. If you didn't have the mystery, then you know, what are we doing? Exactly. Mr. I don't believe in the supernatural. What are you doing, buddy? You know? <laughs> Not throwing shade at people who don't believe in the supernatural. Just a little bit, though. Right. <laughs> I have people that are, you know, in the group of the Fitch Files who haven't had experiences, and, but they're still open to, you know, listening to people's, you know, experiences and hearing about what happens with them. And I'm all for that because – they could always change. They could always have experience. You never know. They could always go through that life changing thing that can always happen. Never know when it might happen. It could be right around the corner. Suddenly, yep. spiritual awakening. Yep. And then before you leave, I want to know: Did you have an experience in your life that like led you to like your your spiritual path that you're on now, like your current self of of learning and growing? Was there an experience of something that like triggered that for you um, or not? Honestly, it was crystals. I had yeah. a friend. Yeah, so I had a friend, like, this is real quick, but I had a friend who liked crystals and stuff, and I was like, you know what, I'll do it, like, let's go buy some. I went to our local store, our, like, local, like, witchy shop, got some. One of the things, it actually wasn't a crystal, it was a, a, called a magic bean, and I know it sounds crazy and weird, but I was just like, you know what, let's do it. So is that a jumping bean? I don't know. It was some dried out bean, but <laughs> the instruction said, make a wish seven days. It'll come true or something. So I was on X turn and I was actually, I was working at, I think it was like a surgical center or something. And I really, really, really wanted to get hired there, but I got this bean, this magical bean and <laughs> ended up um, getting fired, like getting fired from an extern site. So my, I can tell you my wish now, but my wish was to get hired on extern. I got fired. So I was like, you know what? <laughs> screw, screw this little bean. Um, I was so mad, but I still kept it on me. This was like the day after or two days after or something like that. They were like, we're going to let you go. And I was like, for what? They're just like, we just, we're just going to let you go. Had no reason. So I was like, okay, ended up going back to my school. They gave me another extern site. And then on the seventh day, because I was almost done with extern, on the seventh day of having that bean, I got hired on extern. And wow. so I was like. It was magical. It it was magical. And, like, I know it sounds <laughs> dumb, but that was, like, that little tiny bean that did what it was supposed to in a weird way, like, kind of was, I was kind of like, wait a second. This stuff might actually work. Like, mm -hmm. I had already believed in it, mm -hmm. but I was like, okay wait and so then i started actually getting more into like okay um let's get crystals this one's good for this and it really helped and then i was like you know what let's do tarot let's get more in depth like i want to start speaking and understanding more about like the spiritual world and then ever since then it's been just nonstop. crazy been stuff all, has happened been all up from there yeah but shadows <laughs> follow me apparently so yeah we both have shadows following us i guess i guess we're just really interesting i don't know i don't know <laughs> We're just, we're just super cool to be around, you know. Spirits can't help it. Right. Like, hey, what are they, what are they up to? What are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. There's <laughs> just so many things. There's just so many things out there, you know. I know. Like, the unexplainable. The unexplainable. This goes on and on and on. This is a fractal. The more, the more you learn, the more questions you get, the more you mm -hmm. go deeper, the more questions you get, and you just get less and less answers and more questions because it's all – fractal of learning and experiencing and making sense of it and like what why me kind of thing like why why do i feel these things why would i go through this my friends don't you know yeah exactly I'm crazy exactly but we aren't crazy damn it nope and these are things that people go through which is the whole point of the podcast which i've said over and over again i want people to know that there are lots of things going on out there in our minds in the cosmos it's all connected, and we all have power, but only a few know that they actually have power, you know? So yep. I want more people to know their own power because we all have the same amount of power. We just we just tap into it. Some people are obviously more sensitive than, other, than others, you know, but I think that, that every human has the ability to tap into these kind of things that they want to, and they're all, they're all limited, limited by their own beliefs. And, you know, if you think you can't see this, if, if you, you know, believe you can't experience that, then maybe you won't because you, you – 
you've already blocked it off, you know, you've already put up barriers and walls that think it's not real. So, you know, the alien's not going to say hi to you then. <laughs> the alien's not going <laughs> to say hi to you. You don't, you don't believe in him. Exactly. The ghost is going to say hi to you because you're going to talk shit to it the whole time, you know, you're going to mock it. <laughs> you know, a lot of my friends, you know, they don't believe in ghosts and they think I'm crazy for what I believe in, but ghosts, paranormal, aliens, entities, cryptids, all these different things, dreams, sleep paralysis. These are all things that we can't fully explain, but millions of people go through. But, you know, why do we keep writing it off and, you know, shoe shooing it and making people feel, you know, crazy and alienated from it? You know, it's stupid to me. But I want more folks to feel their power and feel the love, damn it. That's all I want. Alexis, thank you for coming on the show and sharing all of your experiences with us um, about the sleep paralysis, the astral projection, all the goodies. Uh, I hope it give some help to people who need it for, you know, those who think they're crazy and, and weird for experiencing these weird things that we go through. I hope to have you on the show again, actually, when we do a video version of it, if you want to. Yeah, this was fun. It's been a good time. Thank you for listening. This has been The Fitch Files. You can find The Fitch Files at Instagram, YouTube, and Spotify. Submit your stories to thefitchfilesofficial at gmail.com.